Hi, my sweet friends. It's time for Sunday School. This lesson is for Sunday, August the 1st, 2021. Can you believe it's already August? I can't believe how fast this summer is going by. Um, you know, you should see me trying to get ready for these videos every week and trying to get these different um, angles and stuff. And right now I'm dealing with, is this pole going to look like it's sticking right out of my head? Well, if it ends up that way throughout the video. You can just laugh about it with your moms and dads. I'm outside again because it's just gorgeous today. And um, I just thought I would talk with you today about some scripture in Ephesians that talks about walking worthy for our God. <clears throat> you know, if we were together, we'd be talking about our spiritual gifts and um, I know that a lot of us have different gifts that we bring, and we should be using all of those for the glory of God. I love this verse out of Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 and 2, and it says, As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. And when we finally get back together, I'm going to challenge us to do some memory verses through Sunday school. So what I've done this week is to write this on one of my red pieces of construction paper, Ephesians 4 verses 1 and 2, and I'm going to try to memorize this one myself. I'm not real good at memorizing scripture. I didn't um, have a good Sunday school when I was a kid, and we kind of, um, I mean, I left a church with my parents when... I was probably about 16 or 18, I don't remember. And uh, I just didn't do a lot of memorizing of scripture and I wish I had. So I'm gonna encourage you to write down Ephesians chapter four, verses one and two, and work with your mom and dad on memorizing that scripture this week. I'm gonna repeat it again. As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Isn't that a good scripture? Well, Ephesians has taught us as we've studied it, or as people have read it to you, that believers are blessed with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Um, here's some of the things that Ephesians tells us. Believers have been chosen before the foundation of the world. Believers have been saved by the blood of Jesus through the forgiveness of sins. Believers have been sealed with the Holy Spirit. Believers are God's workmanship to create, created to do the good works which God prepared in advance. Believers can do God's work through the power of the Holy Spirit. So if you and I are believers, and I know we are, these statements should affect the way we live our lives. So I already read to you Ephesians chapter four, verses one and two, and Paul is urging believers to live a life worthy of the calling that we've received. Well, what does that mean? The dictionary.com, in dictionary.com, worthy means deserving of or fit for. So Paul is urging believers to live a life that is fit for that high calling that God has given us to be a believer in Christ. Believers have been bought with the price of his death and the blood of Jesus. Those five statements that we just went over should affect what we believe and how we walk and how we live both in public and in private. Ephesians chapter four tells us what the walk of a believer should look like. So if you think about the two walks that we could follow, we have two paths of life, a righteous life and a wicked life or a life that's filled with sin. We say that a believer is righteous because of their faith in Jesus. But when a person believes in Jesus, they still have two natures the spirit-filled righteous nature that Jesus gives us, and the sin-filled wicked nature of just being a human. 
So think again what a believer needs to do to live a spirit-filled life and not a sinful life. Well, we need to walk daily with the Lord, and that means having a personal quiet time. It doesn't have to be long. It means reading the Bible, praying, and obeying what Jesus teaches. So if you think about the two paths that we could follow, you could think of one going horizontally, and that's the wicked path just the path that we are just following our sin-filled ways. But then if you think about the other path, you could think about a vertical path toward Jesus, that the righteous walking daily with the Lord would bring us closer and closer to Jesus. And if you think about those two paths in that way, they will form a cross. So the wicked path of sin is the horizontal, the vertical path of righteousness leads to Jesus. Walking daily with the Lord, spending time in his word, obeying and doing what he says to do. So let's keep thinking about what Ephesians 4 says about a life worthy of this calling. So I'm gonna take us to Ephesians chapter four. And the last time I did this out of the Passion Translation. I'm going to do that again. I might have to change it, but we'll, we'll try it. And we're going to look at verses 2 through 6. He says, With tender humility and quiet patience, always demonstrate gentleness and generous love toward one another, especially those who may try your patience. Be faithful to guard the sweet harmony of the Holy Spirit among you in the bonds of peace being one body and one spirit, as you were called into the same glorious hope of divine destiny. For the Lord God is one, and so are we, for we share in one faith, one baptism, and one Father. And he is the perfect Father who leads us all, works through us all, and lives in us all. So what does Paul say are attitudes that, are, that a worthy walk would include? Well, he talked about humility and gentleness, patience, enduring love, and somebody that tries to be in unity with each other. Paul tells us what unifies believers in verses four through six. He says that believers should be unified or in agreement with one body, one spirit, one hope, one Lord one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all. Again, seven things, one body, one spirit, one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all. Seven things that Paul says all believers should be unified in or in agreement with. And then verse 8 said, what did Jesus give to men, to believers, not just men, but believers? Those are gifts. When you, um, if we were together, I mentioned spiritual gifts, we would talk about a survey together, and you would find out what your spiritual gifts are. And those are places where you can identify the areas that God has given you special gifts so that you can serve other people. I know I've talked about this before, but God has given me a great gift of music, both playing the piano and singing together in a group or in a choir, but also being able to play the piano and sing at the same time. Not everybody can do that. And it's a gift that I am very thankful for every day. I think that he was very generous to me when he gave me that gift. And because of his generosity and his grace, I, Pray that I use that in the right way for him every Sunday at First Church and also at another service I go to. So I want you to think about the things that you might have that God has given you, some special gifts that you might be able to use to serve other people. So now let's go back to Ephesians chapter 4 and read verses 11 through 14. And I'm still reading in the Passion Translation, and we may talk about a couple of different things, but it's a good translation. And he has appointed some with grace to be apostles, and some with grace to be prophets, and some with grace to be evangelists, and some with grace to be pastors, and some with grace to be teachers. And their calling is to nurture and prepare all the holy believers to do their own works of ministry, and as they do this, they will enlarge and build up 
the body of Christ. These grace ministries will function until we all attain oneness in the faith, until we all experience the fullness of what it means to know the Son of God, and finally we become one into a perfect man with the full dimensions of spiritual maturity and fully developed into the abundance of Christ. I know that's a lot of words. Stay with me. And then our immaturity will end, and we will not be easily shaken by trouble, nor led astray by novel teachings, or by the false doctrines of deceivers who teach clever lies. So why does Paul tell us these gifts were given? Number one, to prepare a people for God's works of service. And for the body of Christ to be built up until everyone becomes spiritually mature. So if you get to discover what your spiritual gifts are, who are, to, who are you to use them for? Well, they're to be used for God's service, not for yours and not for me, not for your own desire to be famous, but for God's service. Let's go to verses 15 and 16. But instead, we will remain strong and always sincere in our love as we express the truth. All our direction and ministries will flow from Christ and lead us deeper into him, the anointed head of his body, the church. For his body has been formed in his image and is closely joined together and constantly connected as one. And every member has been given divine gifts to contribute to the growth of all. And as these gifts operate effectively throughout the whole body, we are built up and made perfect in love. So how are believers to speak truth? In love. A worthy walk for believers includes speaking the truth with love. Well, there's more to it. Ephesians chapter 4 verses 17 through 32 gives us a picture of how a worthy walk for a believer includes putting away things that are from that wicked path of life and putting on attitudes and actions that please God. <clears throat> In that passage, Paul tells us to take off our old self because it's being just influenced by those evil things and wicked things. And we're to put on a new self so that we can have a different attitude because we were created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. A worthy walk for believers includes a renewed mind with Christ-like attitudes. So how do we get that Christ-like attitude? Well, we spend time in his word and in prayer. So we should be putting off, and these would be, these are in verses 25 through 32. I'm not going to read those to you just to save a little bit of time, but I want to tell you that we're to put off lies and stealing and being lazy and bad language and bitterness and rage and anger and fighting and saying bad things about each other. We're to put on telling the truth, giving, showing kindness, building up other people through our kind conversation, compassion for each other. We talked about that a couple of weeks ago and always forgiveness. So as we look at those two paths that we could walk on, that evil path of our humanity and the righteous path of God. The more time we spend growing in our relationship with Jesus, our walk will become more like that righteous path and our life will be living. We will be living that life worthy of the calling that we have in Christ Jesus. So as we close our time together today, if you're a believer, I want you to think about the things that you might need to put off so that you can have a worthy walk that pleases God. I know for me, sometimes I don't spend enough time in his word. Sometimes I have a hard time forgiving people who have hurt me. I had someone um, who I don't know, I, I, just an acquaintance in a business um, that I had a situation with this week. And I was very angry with the way she treated me. And I had a couple of days of just really kind of sitting in that anger. And I want to walk a life worthy, a walk worthy of God. And so I'm asking him to cleanse that anger and bitterness from me and not to hold resentment toward her. I'll be praying for her. 
and I'll ask you to pray for me as God works that work in me. <clears throat> if you're not a believer today, you can leave that wicked path and join the righteous path. And you can tell God that you're a sinner. Believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sin and was buried and rose again on the third day. And confess that he is your Lord and Savior. That is the best news that we could ever know and that we could ever tell someone else. So I pray that you will remember all of the things that we've walked, talked about today, about our walk. We want to walk worthy of the calling of Jesus Christ, not the walk in the horizontal of our wicked ways, of our anger and bitterness and resentment and unforgiveness, of our bad talk, all of those things that we mentioned. But we want to walk a walk worthy of Jesus, righteous, kind, compassionate, forgiving, wholesome talk, building others up. One more time before we pray, I want to go over our memory verse, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. As a prisoner for the Lord. You know, I didn't mention that. Paul was a, he felt imprisoned by the Lord, and that wasn't a bad imprisonment. He felt like he was just sold out to Jesus and wanted to do everything for him. So he has said, as a prisoner for the Lord, then, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. I challenge you to use that memory verse this week and really get that deep into your spirit. Well, let's close in prayer. Father God, we're so thankful for your word and all of the truths that you've put in it for us. Truths that were given to your disciples so many years ago that are so fresh and true for us today. I thank you for your word that reminds us that we should walk a walk worthy of the calling we have in Jesus. Help us to put off our old self, all of those things that are not pure and clean in us, and instead to put on the robes of Christ, righteousness and kindness and compassion, forgiveness and great love for each other. God, we want to be more and more like you. Help us to walk the walk worthy of our calling in Jesus Christ. And we pray it in his sweet name. Amen. Folks, it's always so good to spend time with you. I'm so glad we've been able to do that today. And I hope we get to see each other very soon. Uh, I've seen a few of you in church. I hope you keep coming back. I hope you have a wonderful week. I'll see you the next time. I love you. And I miss you. Take care.